Sometimes I wonder why this happened to me. Why would God put me through the things he's put me through? I have to keep reminding myself that everything happens for a reason. I can't let what happens to me keep me from realizing my full potential, what I can really do. Being in a wheelchair has taught me that I can do things other people can't do. I can be an inspiration to others in a similar situation. I can inspire through my craft, my God-given talent. I can show others you can pretty much do anything you want, even if you are confined to a wheelchair. I want to encourage others through my passion, wheelchair basketball. When I play basketball, it's the only time I feel truly alive. Out there on the court, I feel unstoppable. When I play basketball, I can show others how capable I still am. Basketball is my life, really. My name is Adonis, and this is my story. Before the accident, we was very involved in a lot of AU basketball, and we did a lot of traveling, a lot of practicing, and um, it was something that not only I look forward to, also Adonis, you know, I think that was something me and him both had dreams of. You know, getting to that next level, of course, like college, not pro, but college. This is a kid who was involved in basketball, baseball. His dad is a coach. He was on the traveling team for basketball. I mean, he's he was doing this since the age of five. And so, um, not bragging on him, but he was a pretty good player for his age. And so, um, we just really said, he was looking so forward to playing in junior high and playing basketball for his daddy and um at that point in time yeah I, I thought i had it all but i never knew anything like this could happen to me and it kind of set me back a little bit and it, everything was typical until july or june of 2004 and that's when um he had the car accident I actually think I was knocked out for a period, <laughs> period of time, you know. But after I came to, I kind of realized uh, he's not moving. Uh, my, my daughter wasn't moving, but I could. I moved, and the other two kids in there, they actually jumped out. They had a head-on collision that day, and there were his dad, his little brother, his sister, and two other friends in the vehicle. So I'm looking for them and I could actually see them at, uh, beside the road and I heard people coming and they actually said don't move him but we wasn't sure. I mean I heard people saying we, we probably need to get him out of the vehicle so. And so I get a call and the hospital here in Magnolia tells me hey come to the hospital you know your your family's been in an accident and I'm thinking they have you know broken leg or broken arm. I'm not thinking we have some severe injuries. So I go into the hospital. I see all these people there because it's taken me probably about an hour to get there. And, um, you know, I see Adonis, of course, he's in a room. He's unconscious. His sister's unconscious. His little brother's in shock. He had broke his femur. I was asleep in the back seat, so I I, they told me I woke up and walked out of the vehicle and collapsed um, as I was walking on the road. And I, I really don't remember much. I just remember waking up in the hospital, asking my mom, hey, what's, what's going on? Why am I in the hospital? Am I still going to get to go to hoop it up and play basketball? Are we still going to practice? His dad, broke his arm in half he, he he was like i said it was hit they were hit head on and um the car t-boned the door it spun around and t-boned the door and so that's where his little sister was sitting and she suffered a um, traumatic brain injury from that accident hi because she took most of the impact and adonis was sitting on the very back seat so of course, he was sitting back there asleep and relaxed. He and one of his friends, we didn't know that, you know, he had a spinal cord injury at that point. Adonis went to school and 
it was it, he was in the sixth grade so he he went to school and it, he was a little reluctant to start school i think he was embarrassed at first to um go to school and be in front of all of his peers in his wheelchair i didn't want people to see me in my wheelchair i thought i, I felt embarrassed being in this chair because i felt like i shouldn't this shouldn't have happened to me and i always ask myself why did god put me in this situation and um i just i, I didn't want people to see me like this especially especially my friends because they could still do they could still do what they were doing and I couldn't do and I couldn't um be in certain activities like they were just like when we when I came from the hospital and all my friends met up we went to my old trailer you know they were like oh we're going to play basketball we're going to do this but I couldn't play because I was in this wheelchair and I didn't think uh, we would ever get through this, but Dunnis, I think he persevered. He, he, he's taken a lot and figured out ways to get things done, you know? So I think he's at a good point now, you know, with, with being in the wheelchair. Sometimes I think back and go, what if, you know? But hey, it is what it is, so. He had to ask people to help him do things. And of course that, made him a little uncomfortable um, but he just tried and you know he got better over time of getting in and out of um, vehicles getting in and out of the shower getting in getting his clothes on that was a challenge putting your clothes on at first that was a big challenge we had to let him fail many times of, at doing this of course you want to help him and it's hard as a parent not to step in and do everything for him but you know, he had to learn to do things on his own, so we had, you know, to show him a little tough love at times. After the accident, I went through a very depression stage where I just, you know, would sit around and eat, play video games, like to be cooped up in the house by myself and not adventure out and let people see me in my chair because I felt shy and, like, I didn't, you know, I didn't want anybody to see me. I was embarrassed. I mean, and people do look at me different, but I just, I don't know, it, I felt, it felt more, I felt more embarrassed in it because I felt like this wasn't me. My wake up call was really that I was getting fat and that, you know, being a bomb and that, you know, I need to exercise and that would, you know, I was just, if, if I exercise, that, that would get my mind off of things and that would help me, you know, socialize with more people and let them see me in my chair and know that I can do what they can what they can do also. I can do anything you can do, I just can't walk. In 10 years, I see myself um, graduated and started my career in business. And you know, I went to SAU Tech in Camden, Arkansas. And I also want to accomplish my wheelchair basketball goal overseas. Um, I see myself settling down maybe in about when I get done with college and after I start my career. I want to have at least two kids and a wife. The way that I drive I have these hand controls and you have these brackets that you attach to the gas and the brake and you have each stick um, controls the gas and you have one that controls the brake. You have this one knob that you use to push the gas and the way you do that is you push forward on the button and then you have the other for the brake where you push down. So it took me about a month to learn how to drive with these. And fairly, it was pretty easy. The first time I had someone ride with me, they were very cautious and about me driving. They were iffy because they weren't sure like 
if the hand controls would come off or would they stop working. But I just had to explain to them that it's just like using your feet. It's just, you have to use your hands. Actually, they've came off um, when I was in Dallas on the interstate. They came off in traffic, but there wasn't an accident. I just had to use my foot as a tool and put it on the brake and put the hand control back on. This is where the accident happened. It kind of brings back some memories, some scary moments, but it's, it's kind of cool to face your fears when you haven't been here in a while. After the accident, you know, it changed a lot of things. We didn't really know about basketball at that time. You know, we thought maybe this was probably, that was probably it for us. The time while he was in the hospital, we had a visit from a guy, actually he was a coach for the uh, Arkansas Rolling Razorbacks. And he came and introduced us to wheelchair basketball. And, you know, he showed me videos and pictures of it, and I was like, no, I'm good. That's not, that's, I, I felt like that wasn't the same kind of basketball. We tried it, we went and watched, and I, I think me and him both kind of was like, eh, we're not sure about this. So, you know, it, it took a lot of effort on both part, actually getting out there doing it. You know, I think we was at the hospital and we went to the, I don't know, we were somewhere, we went to the upper deck or something, they had a basketball goal, and we tried it. He tried it, and I think we kind of both looked at each other and like, Ugh. Not sure how we're going to do this, but after we actually saw a basketball game, a wheelchair game, we kind of figured this is something that we can actually do. You know, it took a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of practice, but we was able to get him involved, get him back in shape, and actually became pretty good at it. I kind of stepped back, you know, even though I, I still like to coach him, I kind of coach him from the side, give him pointers because it was a lot for me to learn because that's a different that's different from what I'm used to because I actually coach basketball, able body ball. So I it, to me it's more enjoyment watching him and still standing on standing on the sideline coaching him now. I, I I really prefer just to be a fan and watch him, you know. It's it's more fun to me right now like that. Within about 2 days I laid there and thought about it. I said you know, let me give this a try. You know, let's make something positive out of this. Maybe I can take this somewhere and make something big out of it. Today I'm trying out for the Rolling Razorbacks. Everything comes down to this. This is what I've been practicing for. It means the world to me. I feel like I have so much I have to prove, and I will.